Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an outstanding problem for all of you today. This problem is from the 2018 Elmo shortlist. So the Elmo is a contest that's a part of the Math Olympiad summer program in the US. And that's a program to train students for the International Math Olympiad. Um, so it has a very silly website. So I'll put a link to that in the description of my video. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a scalene triangle ABC. AD, BE, and CF are the altitudes, and O is the circumcenter. I also labeled H to be the orthocenter. Uh, the circumcircles of ABC and ADO intersect at point P. PF intersects the circumcircle of ABC at Y, and PE intersects it at X, and we want to show that XY is parallel to BC. All right, so the first thing I noticed is that showing that XY is parallel to BC is the same as showing that the arc BY is equal to the arc CX. And showing those two arcs are equal is the same as showing that angle BPY is equal to angle CPX. All right, so if we can show those two angles are equal, BPY and CPX, that would solve the problem. And those obviously are equal to angle BPF and angle CPE. All right, so now here, I'm going to use the isogonal line lemma. Uh, so this is a very handy lemma that I've never used on my channel before in solving a problem, although I did a video on it. It's video number 71. So if you haven't seen it before, I'd highly recommend checking it out. But basically, we want to show that angle BPF is equal to angle CPE if that were true, then we could apply the isogonal line lemma. So uh, BF intersects CE at A, and BE intersects CF at H. So the isogonal line lemma would say that if what we wanted to show was true, then that would show it would also show that angle BPA is equal to angle CPH. So the question is, is the converse true? So if we knew that angle BPA was CPH, would that show what we want? And the answer is yes, also by the isogonal line lemma. And I'm gonna show that later in the video. All right, so we wanna show that angle BPA is equal to angle CPH. Um, how do we do that? Uh, so my approach is gonna be, uh, so if we extended PH to meet the circle at another point, let's say G, uh, we'd want to show that angle BPA was equal to angle CPG, and that would mean that uh, the arcs AB and GC would have to be equal, uh, which is the same as saying that AGCB is an isosceles trapezoid. So I'm going to work at it from the other direction. I'm going to let G be the point so that AGCB is an isosceles trapezoid, and I want to show that PH and G are collinear. So I said a lot there, um, but as I mentioned, uh, we kind of solve problems by working backwards, and then we write the proof going forwards. Uh, so I've done all the working backwards, so now it's working forwards from here. I'm going to try to show that PH and G are collinear. Okay. Um, so first I'm gonna write out uh, sort of what I just mentioned. Um, so we define G so that ABCG is an isosceles trapezoid. And so that means that angle BPA, BPA is half of arc AB, and by symmetry arc AB is arc GC, and half of arc GC is angle GPC. So really, I want to show that H lies on GP. So I want to show those three points are collinear. And then once I do that, I would have that angle BPA is equal to angle CPH. And then I could apply the isogonal line lemma. All right. So how do I show that H lies on GP? Uh, that's probably the trickiest part of this problem. And so I'm going to do something a little clever here. I haven't used the fact yet that uh, this circle passes through O. And there's a kind of symmetry. So everything sort of symmetric, this trapezoid is symmetric about the perpendicular bisector BC and AG. 
So I'm going to draw in that perpendicular bisector. I'm going to let M be the midpoint of BC. And I'm going to let it intersect the circle ADO at point I. And I'm going to let it intersect AG at point J. So J is the midpoint of AG. M is the midpoint of BC. And I is the other intersection point. And then it's clear that A, J, M, B has to be a rectangle. So just drawing in this extra line, I would say, is the most clever step in solving the problem. But you'll see soon why I end up doing it. Okay. So A, J, M, B is a rectangle. And there's a theorem that says that uh, A, H is twice O, M. Or in other words, O, M is is half of AH in any triangle. Uh, so I've mentioned this before, and I'm not gonna prove it here, um, but if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend trying to prove it. Uh, it's, a, it's a very fun thing to prove. Um, okay, so OM is half of AH, um, but there's a symmetry. Um, so note that AIOB has to be an isosceles trapezoid because IO is parallel to AB. And so it turns out that OM has to equal IJ. So I'm gonna write some of this out. Okay, so, so OM obviously has to be parallel to AH uh, because they're both perpendicular to BC. And like I mentioned, OM is half of AH. And so then it turns out that by symmetry, JI also has to be half of AH. Okay, JI is equal to OM. Um, so I haven't formally written out the proof of this, but it, it seems fairly clear by symmetry. AD is a chord of this circle, and we have a rectangle AJMD. Uh, it's fairly easy to see by symmetry that JI has to equal OM. Okay, so we have JI is half of AH, and that means that GI and H have to be collinear. Okay. Um, that's fairly clear. If JI is half of AH and GJ is half of AG, then by proportions, uh, it's clear that GI and H have to be collinear. That's why I constructed point I. All right, so how does this get us closer to what we want? Uh, I, we wanted to show that PH and G are collinear. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here and my methodology is I'm going to try to show that angle PIO is equal to angle HIO. That's going to be my strategy. If I can show that, then that means that PH and G have to be collinear. Um, now, note that PIO it's intercepts the arc PO of the circle ADO. And arc PO has to equal arc AO. So I'm going to write this out. But basically, O is the center of the circle ABC. So OA has to equal OP. And if OA is equal to OP, then that means the two arcs OA and OP in this circle ADO have to be equal arcs. Okay? So now I'm going to do the calculation to show that angle PIO is equal to angle HIO. All right? So angle PIO, it's half of arc OP in this circle ADO, and half of arc OP from what, what I just mentioned is actually half of arc OA. Um, so this fact comes in handy. And now I'm gonna calculate HIO and show it's the same as angle PIO. So I'm gonna do a little angle chase here. Uh, we have angle HIO uh, clearly, it's equal to angle GIJ because they're vertical angles. And then by symmetry, that's equal to angle AIJ. And then angle AIJ uh, is equal to angle IAD because those are alternate interior angles, AIJ and IAD. And here I'm going to use the symmetry, the fact that AIOD is an isosceles trapezoid. So angle IAD by symmetry is equal to angle ODA. Um, so constructing this isosceles trapezoid, this is kind of something that I kind of recognized from seeing a similar idea in a lot of other problems I did. But other than that, it's kind of hard to, to explain the motivation exactly. 
but we have angle IAD is equal to angle ODA, and angle ODA is half of arc AO, or half of arc OA, uh, which is exactly what we want, because now we've shown that uh, angle HIO is equal to angle PIO. They're both equal to angle half OA. So that gets us where we want, because that means that PH and I have to be collinear. And so if PH and I are collinear, then PH, I, and G, all four points are collinear. So I'm going to draw the segment through all four of those. Okay, so now that gave us what we said we wanted, because if we know that's true, uh, then we know uh, that angle BPF, or I'm sorry, we know that angle BPA is equal to angle C, uh, G, or HPC. So I'm going to write this out. So we have angle BPA. Uh, we mentioned up here it's angle GPC, but since we know H is now collinear with G and P, we know that's the same as angle HPC. And we wanted to show this because now we can apply the isogonal line lemma like I mentioned. Um, so if angle BPA is equal to angle HPC, then PA and PH are isogonal in the angle BPC. So if we apply the isogonal line lemma, uh, we want to see where does a BA meet CH? It meets it at point F. And BH meets CA at point E. So I'm going to write this out. But if we apply the isogonal line lemma, uh, so the angles BPC and the rays are PA and PH. Um, so see video 71 if you haven't seen this, um, where I give a proof of it. But it says that since BPA is equal to um, angle HPC, then if we take the intersections of CH and BA, which is F, and BH and CA, which is E, then the isogonal line lemma says that angles BPF is equal to angle CPE. Um, so most of the proofs on the art of problem solving form that I saw used the isogonal line lemma. But I'm curious if there's an elementary proof of this problem that doesn't use it. Uh, so if you know of one, uh, I'd definitely like to see it. Um, all right, but now we're essentially there because now that we know that angle BPF is equal to angle CPE, well, that means that angle BPY is equal to angle CPX, okay? And if B, angle BPY is CPX, then that means the arc BY is equal to the arc CX, okay? And if those two arcs are equal, then it's clear that XY is parallel to BC. So this problem I felt like was very tricky compared to what the diagram looked like when, when, I, when you first start looking at it. And I, I'm really curious if there's a simpler solution. Um, one that doesn't use the isogonal line lemma or some other trick to, to help solve it. Um, so my solution was actually very similar to a not Moodgal solution. Uh, so he's from India and he was the proposer of the, the last problem in 2019, uh, which uh, on the International Math Olympiad, uh, which is probably the hardest problem that I've shown on my channel. So. Uh, 2019 IMO number six. Uh, so if you like this problem, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.